unacceptable. It's been over two months since Butch and Sunni boarded the Starliner and arrived at the ISS, yet there's still no clear resolution or responsible decision from Boeing and NASA. Not even one. Speculation is running wild, and it seems even the astronauts themselves are left in limbo about their own futures. Finally, at the August 7th press conference, NASA admitted the scenarios they are considering for returning the astronauts and revealed new behind-the-scenes developments. What's really happening, and how can the astronauts make it back home? Let's find out in today's episode. Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is grappling with a series of critical issues that have made it impossible to safely return astronauts to Earth at this time. The primary concern lies with the spacecraft's Reaction Control System, RCS. Preliminary test results have highlighted several severe technical problems. Firstly, thermal expansion. When the thrusters heat up, Teflon seals or poppet valves may expand and warp, obstructing the flow of fuel to the thrusters. Secondly, fuel evaporation. High temperatures can also cause fuel to evaporate, significantly reducing the thrusters' performance. In space, every newton of thrust counts, and this loss can severely impact the spacecraft's maneuverability and control. What's more concerning is that Boeing has yet to fully pinpoint the root cause of these issues. Despite numerous tests, they have not reached a definitive conclusion or devised a solid fix. This uncertainty only deepens the worries about the Starliner's reliability. The situation has become so dire that NASA is considering an unprecedented scenario, bringing a crewless Starliner back to Earth. However, a completely new problem has emerged. The Starliner can't return without astronauts on board. What went wrong? During the OFT-1 and OFT-2 test flights, Boeing used an uncrewed version of the spacecraft to test its ability to fly and dock with the ISS. For these missions, they implemented software that allowed for automatic undocking. However, Starliner was originally designed solely for crewed missions, unlike SpaceX's Dragon, which started as an uncrewed cargo vehicle. So Boeing completely removed the automated undocking software used in previous missions and switched to the final software configuration for crewed missions, including manual controls. It seems Boeing never anticipated a scenario where Starliner would need to return without a crew, a situation where retaining the unmanned software would have been essential. This is why the company now needs an additional four weeks to upload the parameters required for an automated disconnect mission. Starliner CFT-1 is turning out to be a colossal risk management failure. Too many contingencies were not planned for. Aside from helium reserves, it seems Boeing didn't have much of a backup plan back on Dragon. There's no denying that the Starliner CFT-1 mission has failed, despite NASA holding a press conference to soothe public concerns. During this briefing, although no official conclusion was reached, NASA finally admitted that they might use SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft to bring the astronauts back to Earth, a solution that appears to be the most viable option given the current situation. NASA is now considering a highly complex approach, launching the Crew-9 mission no earlier than September 24th, with only two crew members instead of the usual four. The two astronauts currently aboard the ISS, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, could become part of the Crew-9 mission, carrying out research and tasks, then returning to Earth in February next year. This would mean their stay on the ISS would be extended to eight months. Notably, it seems NASA has been working with SpaceX for some time on the possibility of bringing these two astronauts back on the drone. Dragon spacecraft. This underscores the severity of the situation, as astronauts typically undergo about two years of training before boarding a spacecraft. The fact that NASA is willing to consider removing two astronauts from the Crew-9 mission to make room for Butch and Suni indicates that this is a well-considered decision and that the situation with Starliner has become extremely serious. Additionally, NASA has recently publicly acknowledged internal disagreements and conflicts between NASA and Boeing. Ken Bowersox, NASA's Deputy Administrator for Space Operations, shared, The Boeing team, because of their experience and their belief in their hardware, would take them to being very confident that the vehicle could bring the crew home, even right now with the uncertainty that we've got. But we've got other folks that are probably a little more conservative. They're worried that we don't know for sure, so they estimate the risk higher. Bowersox also admitted that there are differing opinions within NASA. Specifically, he said, I have to admit that sometimes, when we get disagreements, it's not fun. It can be painful having those discussions. And it's what makes us a good organization, and it's what will get us to a good decision. Well, at least some people had the courage to speak up, even if the feedback might be negative. You know, it shows a genuine commitment to safety. And trust me, no one wants another Challenger incident, especially with the election just around the corner. The situation has grown increasingly tense as NASA has yet to make a final decision on the Starliner mission due to unresolved differences in opinion. Although NASA initially expected to make a decision by mid-August in the latest announcement, they stated that a decision will not come until at least next week. 
The Boeing Starliner CFT-1 incident has become a troubling new symbol of the deeply eroded safety culture at Boeing, one of the biggest names in the aerospace industry. In recent years, a series of mistakes and failures have severely damaged the company's long-standing reputation. The two tragic crashes of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 in 2018 and 2019, which claimed 346 lives, are indelible stains on the company's record. Investigations revealed that the root causes were flawed designs and software issues within Boeing. It seems that the problems plaguing their commercial aircraft division have now spilled over into the Starliner program. In the case of Starliner CFT-1, software-related issues have once again surfaced as a serious threat. It's highly likely that Boeing is uploading parameters stored from the previous OFT-2 mission into the software being used on CFT-1. While this method might save time and resources, it also carries significant risks. Reusing parameters from an older software version can lead to major problems. Incompatibilities between software versions could trigger system errors, and mismatched parameters with the current system configuration might reduce performance or even cause critical failure. To change one smallest detail, you have to test. But what's particularly troubling is the difficulty in testing the new software under the actual conditions Starliner will face. Boeing can only test the software on the ground before uploading it to the spacecraft. There is no way to conduct a fully integrated test in space. This creates a significant gap in the quality assurance process, raising serious concerns about the system's reliability. Starliner can remain on the ISS for up to 90 days. Although NASA has allowed it to stay on the International Space Station, ISS, for the maximum duration and even postponed the Crew-9 mission to give Boeing more time to assess the spacecraft's return capabilities, this seems to be a final concession. It appears NASA has nearly given up hope on Starliner and is preparing for an alternative scenario, Boeing's poor safety culture. Beyond straining the Boeing-NASA relationship, Starliner may also be the catalyst for a series of further safety investigations. In a concerning development, NASA's Office of Inspector General, OIG, has issued severe criticisms of Boeing's work on the next version of the Space Launch System, SLS. The OIG report has uncovered serious shortcomings in quality control at the Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans where the SLS Block 1B version is being produced. Specifically, the OIG highlighted that Boeing lacks a reliable quality management system and a well-trained workforce. This was evident when the Defense Contract Management Agency, DCMA, tasked by NASA to oversee Boeing's work, reported that Boeing's processes for addressing contract non-compliance were ineffective. Moreover, Boeing frequently failed to respond or implement corrective actions when similar quality control issues reoccurred. A glaring example of these quality control lapses was discovered during an OIG site visit in April 2023. OIG staff found that a portion of a liquid oxygen tank intended for the SLS core stage on the Artemis III mission, had to be quarantined and held for disposition because the welds did not meet specifications. NASA officials explained that this issue stemmed from inexperienced Boeing technicians and inadequate planning and oversight of work orders. These findings raised serious safety concerns for the SLS and Orion spacecraft, including the crew and cargo. The OIG expressed worry that these factors could directly impact the safety of future missions. This situation not only questions Boeing's technical capabilities, but also sheds light on the broader safety culture and quality management within the entire organization. The recurrence of similar issues in both the Starliner and SLS programs indicates that these are not isolated incidents, but symptoms of a deeper, systemic problem in how Boeing handles its space project. For NASA, these issues present a significant challenge. The agency is now faced with the difficult decision of balancing its long-standing commitments to partners like Boeing with the need to ensure the absolute safety of crewed space missions. NASA's upcoming decisions will have far-reaching consequences, not only for the U.S. space program, but also for the entire aerospace industry. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.